So we are going to have a simply supported beam with support A and support B and um, that has the length L. And directly in the centre is going to be the point force P. I'm not going to consider any self weight or anything like that in the situation, just literally the point force. So because you've got the point force acting in the middle, you're going to get two reactions. So that is the reaction force on A and the reaction force on B. Now, because this situation, the point force is acting in the middle, the reaction at A is going to equal the reaction at B. And because every action is equal and opposite, in this case, the reaction will be P over 2. So once you've got that, you are then able to come down here and construct your shear force diagram. Um, so this is the zero line here. So, just so you'll start with your P over 2 value um, at RA. So you'll come up here for P over 2. You'll then come across to where your point force is. So in this case it's in the centre, so just draw a little line down the middle there and there. So you'll then come down P over 2 and also down another P over 2 because the total force that's acting there is P. Um, and then across and so then that means that you should then go back up P over 2 um, and you'll be back at zero. And your, for your system to be in equilibrium, your shear force diagram must in equal to zero, ultimately, which it does in this case. So then the next thing to think about is the bending moment diagram. Um, and they, in the case of the point force, this is going to be a triangular shape like this with the maximum moment being at the centre where the point force is acting. And there are two ways that you can calculate this maximum moment down here. You can use this equation which you just PL over 4 or you can make use of the shear force diagram to calculate it. So the area under the shear force diagram is equal to the moment up until that point. So in this case you've got length of L over 2 and you've got a height of P over 2. So the area is P over 2 times L over 2 which is equal to PL over 4. As you can see it's the same. So you don't necessarily have to remember this equation. If you can work out your shear forces you can then calculate your moment if you can remember your bending moment diagram and what it should look like um, and the last thing that you normally have to consider is the deflection so in this beam we're going to have a sort of deflected shape that looks something like that and your maximum point of deflection is going to be where your force is acting in the middle here in this particular case so we'll call that delta in the middle and there is quite a simple way that you can work this out so in this case uh, deflection is equal to PL cubed over 48 EI um, your P is in kilonewtons, your L is in meters, your E is normally, it's Young's modulus which is a material property and is normally given in newtons per millimeter squared and your I which is the second moment of area which is a, um, a section property so that is relevant to each beam type that you um, choose, that is normally given in CM to the four, so centimetres to the four. And 
as you can see, these are all different units, so which can make it quite annoying, quite complicated to convert, especially if you're not good at converting units like me. So if you basically just do this deflection equation times by 10 to the 5, that will give you your deflection in millimetres. So you don't need to do any conversions, you can just use the values as they're given normally. Um, but it is worth remembering that that 10 to the 5 relates to this particular configuration. Obviously it will vary if you're using or given are given something different. Um, and that's that.